views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice speak up and become leaders of their own life everyone has their gifts to share with the world and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice which is within all people men and women topics include personal growth spirituality creativity leadership and divine feminine now here's your host chris stanis well welcome to voices of women i'm so glad to be here today on this friday and excited soon we're going to be launching our website with all our Women of Wisdom conference presenters and workshops. And, and I, I get the privilege of sharing these presenters with you on the May radio show. Um, they're offering their wisdom, their gifts, and they come with a passion to support women in, in our community. And also, um, you know, through my radio show worldwide. Um, so great to have them on the show. Um, speaking of community in Seattle this weekend, I'd love to have you join us for our fall festival. It's a Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival. It's at North Seattle College tomorrow, Saturday, from 10.30 to 5 p.m. There's lots of artists. There's jewelry, um, beautiful jewelry, energy healers, intuitive readings. I'm even going to be doing some energy healing work. Um, and all the supports of Women of Wisdom Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization. And today, I'm going to speak with two of our presenters, Jamie Starr and Elizabeth Wright. And first, we're going to begin with Jamie Starr. And we're going to be talking about the archetype of Aphrodite. And Jamie brings together the archetypes, psychology, and personal growth. She moves clients to change through diverse areas of heart-centered knowledge using mythology, systems theory, metaphysics, ritual theater, and art in a unique way, which honors the psyche's love of image and story. And Jamie's been a mental health counselor since 2010, a coach and spiritual mentor since 2003, and she's currently working on her Ph.D., She's going to give a workshop at Woman of Wisdom on Sunday, February 14th, a perfect day for Divine Aphrodite, Archetype of Love and Beauty. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you, Chris. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. Well, first, I want you to share your story. You know, how did you come to this work, Um, you know, working with women, working with the archetypes, working with Aphrodite? Yeah, um, it's been kind of a wonderful, long, blessed path. It's one of those things where the road is at your feet and you have to walk it. I, uh, I had some tough times when I was growing up. Um, I had a boyfriend who wasn't real good to me. I don't know if any of your readers can uh, connect with that or have similar experiences with that. And if you've ever been treated like dirt, then it makes you feel really unworthy. And I remember I was, um, I think I was 13 or 14 at the time and just really struggling with this experience that happened to me uh, with my relationship with this man. So I had, I, I wasn't doing very well. And my friend said, Hey, why don't you come to this festival? There's a spring mysteries festival in uh, Fort Flagler. They do it every year at um, uh, around Easter. And what it is, it's a reenactment of Persephone's descent into the underworld and Demeter looking for her daughter and so I'm watching this. It's ritual theater. So the uh, all the actors and actresses are priests and priestesses, and they are sort of wearing the energy. We call it invoking. They're invoking the energy of the gods. So the person on stage, she, you know, it's not just Aphrodite, somebody playing Aphrodite. It is Aphrodite, right? Everyone has that very warm feeling. So I'm watching Persephone get taken by Hades, the lord of the underworld, and I'm like, oh, my God. This is, this is the worst thing. Like, I can't watch anymore. I know exactly what's going to happen. This happened to me, right? She's going to get lonely. She's going to get 
miserable. How could anything wonderful happen after something terrible has happened to you? So I went to my friend and I said, I don't want to watch anymore. And he said, no, just stay with it. So I did. And I was really glad that I did because Persephone in the story, she doesn't get depressed. She doesn't fade away into nothing. She becomes a queen. And she really took on that power. And so I thought when I was watching her, I'm like, oh, my God, I am Persephone. I I could be a queen. How can I master my underworld? And so there's a, a portion uh, at the festival where you can go and talk to these priests and priestesses who are carrying the gods. And I went to Aphrodite, well, the priestess carrying Aphrodite, and I said, I, I need something. And she said, I want you to be want you to dedicate to me and be my priestess and figure out what that means. And so I said, oh, okay, because when the gods tell you to do something, you do it, right? When love comes to you, you say, yes, ma'am. You don't say no. You don't argue. So I, that really started my dedication. That was in, um, oh, gosh, like 2003. It really set me on a path to exploring psyche, exploring mythology, and how that manifest in the world and ritual. Um, I became a counselor very soon after that, started my work there, um, been working on that ever since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, those life lessons, there are, are, are there are guideposts, you know, for what we are supposed to be working on or wh- who we're supposed to be, you know, what, you know, from, from your um, wounds, sometimes our gifts show up. Absolutely. And, and that was really empowering. And to have using these uh, tools about sort of making the myths real for you, I found that that was actually more helpful than a lot of the therapy I received. Um, and when I, when I went to school to become a therapist, I was like, how can we do this better? And I found that, you know, there weren't people really doing that kind of work. It was very cognitive, like, how do you think? And then how can I change how you think as a, as your therapist? Um, and I didn't like that. So that's why I'm going back to school to get my PhD so I can study how archetypes and myths really impact us on an emotional healing level. So that's, that's been my work for the last uh, couple months or so. I've been going deeply into that with my, with my schooling. Mm-hmm. Well, um, let's talk about Aphrodite. You know, why, yes. why work with her and, and what gifts did she bring you? You know, she's really lovely energy. Um, I think we've all seen Aphrodite in like movies where she's a bimbo uh, or really shallow. And I just, I struggled with that at first, but what I found with working with mythology is that the myths really go deeper and deeper and deeper. So just like, just like anything, the surface is not only what, there's much more than just what's on the surface. So Aphrodite is very beautiful, right? And I really struggled with what does that mean for me as a woman if I'm trying to be beautiful like Aphrodite? Am I being vain or selfish uh, should I really spend $200 on these shoes? I don't know. <laughs> That's not normally what my values are. So I, I, I did spend some time with that, and I, I found that that actually took me to a, a deeper place within healing around how I look and how I present myself in the world, how I use my my sexuality as an expression of myself instead of something to be kept secret or dirty. Um, I work with other women who also work with Aphrodite or who have carried her energy as priestesses, and they all agree that the kind of unconditional waves of love that come off her, um, no matter who you are or how you look, is incredibly supportive. Um, You can pray to her or um, have an altar of beautiful things. And just the act of, like, setting time and a place aside to put beautiful things that make you feel beautiful and sexy and loved. That's an incredibly powerful act. And I actually use that in therapy with my clients now. I said, set aside a place where you, where you work on that part of yourself and how she approaches the relationship. You're you're talking about that inner beauty of that too, because we have the Hollywood look, you know, where there's a focus Mm -hmm. on 
youth and got to be beautiful. You got to be skinny. You got to be young, plastic surgery mm -hmm. and, and the media, you know, all the fashion magazines, skinny people. And that's sort of the outer beauty. And, and what I'm hearing you and what I feel that's probably coming through in Aphrodite for you is that it's looking at this from an inner place. That's very true. Incredibly, the inner place. And we have to understand that the standard of beauty that's out there is it's made up. There's some wonderful statuary of Aphrodite. There's one called Aphrodite of the Beautiful Buttocks. And she's looking behind her shoulder and she's lifting up her dress to look at her bottom. And it is, it is a quite luscious bottom, may I say. <laughs> it's not your skinny little girl. She's, she is a woman and she's fully formed and round and having these different images of beauty and what beauty is or could be is very very empowering. It's very much what makes you feel beautiful rather than how do I look beautiful? Very much from the inside out. Yeah, and it's and it's honoring and loving your body instead of um I mean there's so much shame around our bodies too, so it's learning how to <laughs> love that it's part of us. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that really helped me was um I was feeling some body shame, like I guess we all we all do or we go through that. And um, Aphrodite is also a goddess of bathing. She's always imaged like bathing in beautiful springs. So I was like, well, let me try that as kind of just to get into the energy a little bit. Let me just see what this is like. So, uh, Chris, I went to one of those um, like all day lady only spas where there's pools and massage tables and saunas and nobody wears any clothes. And mm -hmm. at first I was I've like, been oh there my too. God. and we're going to, we're going to come back. We're going to take a little break and you're going to come back and talk about that. When we come back, this is Chris Stainis. You're listening to voices of women and we'll be right back. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org, and we'll see you there. We Carry the Light with host Dr. Susan Allison is the show that inspires you to find the light within and shine your light in the world. You'll hear from guests who model how to be the highest, brightest, most evolved, fulfilled, and conscious humans possible. Tune in each Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and let Dr. Susan help you discover that you carry the unique light that only you can shine. Are you interested in schools that inspire, excite, and encourage our kids to step beyond what they thought was possible? The Access Possibility School is enrolling now. Students in grades K through 8 are welcome to our virtual classroom. Classes start September 8th. For more information about the Access approach, teachers, enrollment, and what makes us different, visit accesspossibilityschool.com. That's accesspossibilityschool.com. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Pat. I am super excited about the Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival coming in October. For those of you out there, if you're a healer, vendor, reader, or earth-friendly educational group seeking to participate in this fall event, well, you get to reserve your space now. To participate in this event, email wow at womenofwisdom.org. All right, everybody. We'll see you there. Join Chris Danitz for the 2015 Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival, Saturday, October 24th, 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and I'm with Jamie Starr today. So, Jamie, um, let's have you give your website and anything that you have to share with um, people. Oh, sure. So my website is www.aligntoarchetype.com, and If you come to the website and you sign up on the side, you'll get the newsletter. I send out some tidbits of wisdom about mythology. I also have um, a free ebook that you can download uh, to learn more about archetypes and what they can do for you. Although I'm thinking of changing it to do something a little uh, more fun, like um, maybe a teleclass or something. So you'd have to stand by, but at the moment you can totally download the the free ebook, which is really fun. Tells you more about. mythology and how it appears in our lives and how we can connect with it and what it means. I'd love to meet you guys on the website. Mm-hmm. So you were sharing how you had gone to a ladies, a woman's spa where everybody yes. is naked. We were just, <laughs> we were just, just left everybody hanging there. <laughs> I know hanging in, in anticipation. Yeah. The, the women's spa, um, it's called Olympus spa in, uh, there's one in, um, in Linwood which is nice and big. And at first I was really shocked at how everyone was walking around with no clothes and tall women, skinny women, fat women, hairy women. I was very, my eyes were opened and um, how quickly it became sort of non-sexual and easy. And then when you have to put clothes and you're like, oh, why are, why is everybody wearing clothes? It, it took about half an hour for it to be like not a big deal. Um, and just seeing the different kinds of women, I think that we don't, we don't see each other that way very often. And it was uh, a blessing to sort of see other women in their natural form and, and being a part of that as well. So now I try to bring my girlfriends with me when I go to the spa and just have a fun, a fun day out soaking in the tubs and in the sauna and things. Um, But, but really it, it took something that powerful to, shake me out of that judgment about my body because the things that we see on TV in movies, those are real women, but they're not the only women and they're not the only beautiful women. And when we speak to the men in our lives and they get really honest about what is beautiful to them, I think that we women, we need to hear that. We need to hear what men find beautiful because I think we can be surprised at how it's not, tiny wafy women or for some men it is and some men like bigger women and the men love a variety our, our partners love a variety in women and they love us more I think than we love ourselves and going to the spa really gave me an opportunity to sort of visualize what that meant and it, it was very powerful I encourage you it's a very simple experience but if you ever get an opportunity to to give it a try if that's uncomfortable for you Push yourself a little bit. Yeah, it is. It, and it's actually beautiful to see um, all kinds of bodies and the beauty in them. We did a, uh, I was at a fashion show one time. It was a tattoo fashion show. And um, and it was for all women were in the audience. And so there was some nudity. But it was amazing the different shapes and sizes of bodies that had tattoos. And it was just beautiful. It was really honoring the female form and mm-hmm. no one's body was less beautiful than another. And that was like an eye-opening for me, too, when you when you talked about that. Well, let's move on to, so we've been talking about Aphrodite, and one of the mm-hmm. things that you talk about is how it can improve your sex life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When you are feeling beautiful, especially as women, women have complicated, actually, they're not that complicated. Women are told that their sexuality is complicated, But the truth is, what women need that men maybe don't 
um, is that women need to relax and women need to relax into their sexuality. It takes us a little more time to get going. And Aphrodite, uh, working with her energy really taught me about that. I I remember I was doing a meditation and I was visualizing the goddess in front of me and I was speaking to her and I said, what lessons do you have for me? And I was expecting like this really profound like shift, you know, this really wisdom from the ages and this image, she looked at me and she said, never chew chocolate. And I was like, that's it. So I gave it a try. And so like, okay, you don't chew chocolate. What do you do? Will you let it melt in your mouth? And I don't know. I don't know if this is true for you, Chris. Have you ever like actually tasted chocolate? Like just let it sit in your mouth and just let it melt. And I struggled with it. I was like, we got to chew this, you know, all this stuff came up for me. And what was a very simple mindfulness exercise was actually very profound. And it it taught me a lot about actual real pleasure and how we intellectualize things. And, And we do it with sexuality too. I can't, I can't tell you how many women tell me, well, I was, I was with my partner and all I could think of was what color should I paint the ceiling or, you know, those kind of awful things. And instead of being in their bodies and enjoying the feeling of it, and Aphrodite really teaches you to be in your body. And when women are in their bodies, fireworks happen. (laughs) It's better. It's better for women and it's better for their partners. Uh, There's a psychologist uh, who talks about uh, selffulness in sexuality, that we need to be not selfish, but full of our own selves. And in being full of ourselves, we can really share that with our partners. And when when both people have selffulness or more, I'm not judging, when you have selffulness during during sexuality, that 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 is what brings pleasure and connection. Ironically, it's um, sort of not how you would normally think about it. We think that we need to please the other, especially women, we feel we need to please our partner. And if we're angry, we, you know, disconnect. And Aphrodite, the lessons that she has for us are really, you know, get in your body and, and feel that and be emotionally connected and be aware and allow your partner that same space and opportunity to do that. And Sex is not the only indicator of a good relationship, but it is a good indicator. And I encourage any of you out there, if you are struggling with your sexuality, to please get help. It is absolutely worth it. It's not selfish. It's it's an important part of our physiological and spiritual wellness. So I just there's no shame in that. Any therapist would be happy to help you with that, but find one that you connect with. I just part of my mission in life is that you we all deserve to have good, wonderful relationships, and sex is an important part of that. So, so do Yeah, and you sex- spoke about, you know, there is a thing of um, we leave our bodies a lot. You know, we, mm-hmm. we um, disconnect with our bodies, and and it's, you know, connected to our, our traumas, our wounds, and, mm-hmm. you know, we don't want to feel. And so, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. Well, I think, too, one of the things that you do, and I want you to talk about, is how ritual plays uh, into this. Um, role of, of, I think there's a lot, of, um, I'm guessing in the work you do, there's a lot of um, healing and um, profound insights when you bring ritual into these aspects. Absolutely. When, when we ritualize something, rich, ritual is an opportunity for us to participate in the myth of the gods or of the seasons or whatever it is that we are, we're we're participating in the story. And so when you do rituals around, say, Aphrodite, you're really making the stories personal and you're exploring what's my connection here? What is my role? What does it mean? Um, And and you, you represent that symbolically, whether you're, okay, I'm going to take a spiritual bath and I'm going to do things with intent that's one way to do ritual or there's ancient rituals where you would sacrifice certain things. And the, the rituals, the idea of a ritual is that it's sort of similar or the same um, or in some sort of cycle that you would repeat it again, uh, maybe the same time next year or at a similar 
situation like a bachelorette party is a fantastic ritual we never think about. Now imagine doing a bachelorette party with intent. You know, that makes a really big difference. That when these things come around again, we get to participate in them and think about them personally. So when you say, okay, I'm sacrificing this, la-di-da, wait, what does it mean to sacrifice this? Why do we sacrifice wine, for example, instead of water? Or why, why are doves symbolic to Aphrodite? And you spend time thinking about that, and that gives you insight. And you say, well, what's my connection to doves? And so you're asking these questions that the rituals bring up, and they're really just a wonderful opportunity to set aside the mundane and make a space for the spiritual in your life and to do it with intent. It's a wonderful opportunity and a source of fantastic creativity. And I, I just love helping my, my clients and friends find that opportunity and find the richness and find the meaning of things that maybe they hadn't thought about before and apply it to their own lives. So it's not just doing the rituals. It's not intellectual, although it can be, but it's really about connecting mind, body, and spirit. It's really that unification, isn't it? Yes, yes. And there's, and, and like I say, paying attention to those symbols, like you said, you know, what does a dove mean to you? What is, what does this mean to you? Cause you know, they, Sometimes we take things just as words, and they, they aren't just words. There's meaning behind it. You know, what's the thought behind the words? What's the feeling behind mm-hmm. the words? Yeah, and when you look at mythology and when it's ritualized, you can kind of see some, some dark spaces in there, which gives us an opportunity to look at our own darkness, but in kind of a safer way. For example, there's a, a poem where uh, Sappho is a, a famous poet, from Greek times, and she was lamenting to Aphrodite about somebody she loved who didn't love her. And Aphrodite appears to her in the poem, and she says, who do I have to punish? Sappho, who should I, how can I reap vengeance upon this person who doesn't love you? And I was like, oh, Aphrodite is like kind of mean here. Like you'd think she's not all love and roses, but but looking at that darkness that way, you get to ask, okay, how does love uh, hurt sometimes? Or the sting Mm -hmm. of not being with somebody you love. How do you connect with somebody who doesn't love you or how do you deal with those feelings? And it gives you an opportunity to do that in a a slightly disconnected way um, so that you can really observe it and feel into it without being sort of swept away by your own emotions around it. So I yes. invite you. It's an opportunity. Okay. I'm so sorry I have to interrupt you because it's our break time. Thank you so much for being on the show, Jamie, and Thank sharing you. your wisdom pleasure. on the Divine Aphrodite. She is going to be at the Woman Wisdom Conference on February 14th, Divine Aphrodite, Archetype of Love and Beauty. So we'll be taking another break, and we'll be coming right back. got attitude keys to the rescue adjust your attitude with keys clear protein waters so refreshing just a few sips of keys will give you a whole new outlook thanks to 22 grams of the happiest protein on earth tongue tingling tasty without the guilt of naughty or nasty ingredients if that doesn't put a smile on your face maybe you need to drink too put a little in your attitude with keys protein water on Amazon or at Keys, K E E S, please.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. This inspiring show will help you never feel helpless in life or love ever again. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Win a free car during the huge Grand Slam event only at Central Auto Group CT.com, your number one buying destination, the home of Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, and Volkswagen. If the New York Mets sweep the World Series, you could win a free car from Central Auto Group CT.com. Free car! Register to win at Central Auto Group CT.com. General Manager Filippo is back at Central Auto Group CT.com. That means crazier than ever deals and promotions. Stop by and say hi. He'll make every deal happen. How about a new Ford Focus, Hyundai Accent, or Volkswagen Jetta for 
$99 a month. $99 a month. A huge selection of Mazda 3s ready for immediate delivery. Five reasons, one destination. Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, Volkswagen, pre-owned. Open seven days a week. Win a free car if the New York Mets sweep the World Series. Register to win online at Central Auto Group. CT.com. Exit 28. Old Exit 87. I-395. Plainfield. Your number one buying destination. Central Auto Group. No purchase necessary. See dealer for details. Come support a great cause at Capizano Olive Oils and Vinegars, 5 Kongswell Street, just off of Route 1, West Broad Street in Pocatuck, Connecticut. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, on Wednesday, October 28th, from 6.30 till 8 o'clock, there will be a brief discussion about the benefits of a Mediterranean lifestyle using fresh, extra virgin olive oils. There will be a tasting with summer squash and zucchini noodles, pomodoro e basilico sauce with sautéed portobello mushrooms, an Italian red wine, and a special sweet treat will be presented. This will begin a series of events that will be focused on a Mediterranean lifestyle with the health benefits of our exceptional ultra-premium extra virgin olive oils at Capazano. Suzanne and Stephen Capazano invite you to attend. The fee is $7. Wednesday, October 28th from 6.30 until 8 at Capazano Olive Oils and Vinegars, 5 Cogswell Street in Pawkatuck. Help support breast cancer awareness. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the DrPatShow.com. That's T-H-E-D-R-Patshow.com for listening times in your area. Well, welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and now I am um, have on our call Elizabeth Wright, and she is the founder of Healthy Dimensions. It's a holistic mind-body approach for weight loss and multidimensional health. She's created this program that challenges current weight loss paradigms and focuses on the whole person. Elizabeth holds a master's degree in nursing and has been an educator for over 15 years in both hospital and corporate settings. And she has a book, Healthy Dimensions, A Nurse's Mind-Body Weight Loss Solution, along with a companion program and workbook. Elizabeth has a mission to help women everywhere get in touch with the wisdom in their bodies and use evidence-based tools to take back their power in their relationship with food and their body image. And you can check her out on her website is www.healthy dash dimensions.com and elizabeth is giving a workshop at our conference on saturday february 13th it's called listen to your body's wisdom so welcome elizabeth thank you for having me chris yeah so you have struggled with weight yourself and so let's hear your journey um through that that process sure um i you know it started very young for me i was overweight by the time i was in second grade and Throughout my life until the age of 50, I bounced up and down all the way up to 200, back down to 140 or 150, at least six times during those years. So I would struggle and lose weight and, you know, starve myself and all of that, do what I needed to do. Um, But within a year, my weight would start going back up, and usually within two years, I was right back up to 200 pounds. So it was really very frustrating. And, you know, as a nurse, uh, when I went back to school, I learned a lot about reading about research and understanding research. And I just said, you know, there's something wrong here. I, my body wants to be, you know, big and fat, and I don't know why. Um, you know, I have lots of willpower everywhere else in my life. Why is this so hard? So I really kind of just got very deep into reading and trying to understand what was out there in the literature about it. And I was kind of surprised by some of the things that I learned. Um, and around the age of 50, I started applying them to my life and lost weight. Well, that, you know, that wasn't that big of a surprise. I had lost weight before. 
But uh, this time it was different. It was easier, and um, I applied some, you know, holistic things along with finding out what the right way of eating was for me. And uh, it's been five years now, and my weight is still normal, and that is just a miracle. I had a lot of health improvements at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us about um, about that, The you know, how that impacted you health-wise. Sure. I was, you know, I was only 50, which looking back now that I'm 55, uh, seems young, (laughs) but I had, you know, I had um, sleep apnea. I was using, uh, you know, one of the CPAP machines at night. I had, I was taking medications for GERD, had a lot of problems with my throat and my voice because of that. I had a lot of joint pain. I was pretty sure I was headed for a hip replacement, uh, you know, and um, I had acne at the age of 50. And when I made these changes to the way I ate um, and and lost the weight, everything went away. I don't have any health problems at all anymore. So um, anxiety was another big one, and that's gone. So there was a, some really profound physiological effects besides losing 50 pounds um, that I was able to gain from this process. So what changes did you make in your diet? You know, all the things that you are, are mentioning are things that do impact a lot of people, especially when we're older, in our 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, joint pain, all that. Um, what changes did you make? Well, I, I learned a couple of really important things that I didn't know before. And one is that there's a lot of folks who overproduce insulin. And when you overproduce insulin, a couple of things happen. One is you... Uh, When you eat a carbohydrate-type food and you produce too much insulin, two things happen. You uh, store your food as fat really fast, and so you get hungry quickly. Where a normal person would have, you know, a sandwich and they wouldn't be hungry for three or four hours, I got hungry right away. And that's because those of us who do this, uh, you know, create too much insulin, we, we store the calories that are in our bloodstream you know, immediately, and then the blood sugar drops and you get really hungry. So that is part of it. But the other thing that insulin does does is it's inflammatory. And when insulin rises, leptin rises. And leptin is particularly inflammatory and it, um, you know, causes profound hunger in the brain. And so what really was amazing was that, you know, when I I said, well, if I'm someone who overproduces insulin, then I should not eat so much carbohydrate and get that insulin down. And when I did, within just two or three weeks, um, some of those problems that I had went away immediately. The joint pain was the, the most surprising and exciting change. Uh, that happened long before I lost very much weight. At that point, I'd lost, you know, maybe seven, eight, nine pounds. Um, what happened was the inflammation reduced in my body. And, you know, there's plenty of research in the last 10 years especially about uh, inflammatory, chronic inflammation, and there's books and all kinds of information out there about it. It's really the underlying factor for a lot of chronic diseases. And for people who overproduce insulin, reducing your carbohydrates not only helps you lose weight because you're not storing fat all the time, but it also reduces in- inflammation. And that's uh, where, like, the acne and the rashes and some of those autoimmune problems can get better way before you lose very much weight. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about um, let's be specific on the carbohydrates you had to let go of, or or was it just the amount of carbohydrates that you total? Reduced? You know, definitely you're looking at the total carbohydrate. We, uh, you know, I like the the philosophy that you subtract the fiber from the total carbohydrate grams to get a net carbohydrate. That way, when you're eating vegetables, green vegetables especially, they have some carbohydrate in them, but most of it's fiber. So the things I gave up were the white things you know, um, grains and potatoes and sugar and everything related to uh, those things. There's, you know, a lot of stuff that Americans eat that have those in them. And uh, that is what I had to give up. I eat a wonderful, rich, delicious diet with plenty of meat and fat and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So you stay away from like pasta and breads and absolutely. Yeah. And I also, once I got away from those things, I found out that my stomach really doesn't tolerate anything with grain in it very well. When I do have some now, um, I get, you know, an upset stomach. I get, um, you know, an abdomen feeling like rocks. Um, so I, you know, even if I'm not so concerned about the carbs, I tend to, to lean away from those. But that's not everybody. That's just me. Mm-hmm. And, and what about then um, the gluten issue? How do you yeah, feel Yeah, well, about I that? think, 
you know, that's that's it. There, there's gluten in grain, um, and our grain that we have today is so different than the grain that our ancestors ate. It has been modified genetically. It's not it's not like they're going in there and changing genes now. But back in the in the 60s, there was a big push to feed the world, and you know they went and they and they developed grains that were hybridized and had uh, they were bigger and fatter and they produced more and and we fed the world and that was great. But as it turns out, there are a lot of proteins in that gluten that were never even seen before, and our bodies don't know how to handle them. Some of us, um, and some people are are so sensitive that they are celiac. And it's a, it's a extraordinarily dangerous for them to, to eat grains. But there's a whole other level of people who are sensitive and have, you know, some effects from grains, uh, and they feel better when they don't eat them. So they're not mm-hmm. necessarily diagnosed as celiac. But that, that population is being identified a lot more uh, in the last five to ten years because we have antibody screening that we can do that's, that's a little better than what they had, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, so tell us about how you came to develop the Healthy Dimensions program. Um, well, you know, I was uh, following this lower-carbohydrate diet, and it's not without its challenges. Surely, any time you make a big change in the way you eat, it's hard. And about that time, I started really exploring a lot more about, you know, um, the research that's been done around um, decision-making and emotions and um, how our brains work and how to make life changes easier and not just having to use just raw willpower. But there's also some great research on willpower. Uh, Roy uh, Baumeister wrote a book, uh, came out a few years ago, called Willpower, and that was a really, really important one for me, too. Um, So I I pulled out of all of these things, all of these books, and all of this wonderful research that, that these people are out there doing in our universities around the country, and there was a lot of it that really applied to being able to stay on an eating plan and kind of straighten out my, you know, your head when you spend a lifetime, you know, in, in obesity or even worse, up and down like I was, you know, it creates a lot of, of beliefs in your head and getting those straightened out um, are a big part of realigning who you believe yourself to be and who you create yourself to be. Yeah, so, so I, we'll talk more about this. We're going to take a short break and come back and talk more with Elizabeth Wright. Are you feeling broken from your relationships? Are you second-guessing yourself about friends, family, and lovers? Tune in to the hit show that's creating a buzz in the love-seeking community. Love Seeker Radio, finding love for your authentic self with renowned love coach Heather Lynn. Tired of dissatisfying relationships? Kiss them goodbye and power up your love seeker energy. Coach Heather Lynn reminds you that you can just be you, the beautiful and perfect you. Visit heatherlynncoaching.com to learn more. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org, and we'll see you there. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. 
No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basile is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all, a healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. During the month of October, Dr. Darvish and the Holistic Medical Team are promoting Breast Cancer Awareness Month with 25% off breast thermography. Safe, painless, radiation-free, and accurate. Purchase your breast thermography screening for 25% off now until October 31st to receive this special. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day, we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. We've been talking with Elizabeth Wright about her Healthy Dimensions program. So, Elizabeth, can you share your website where people can find out more about uh, your work and and find out about your books and workbook? Yes, it's healthy-dimensions.com. Okay, great. And do you have a newsletter or anything that you... I do not have a newsletter, but I blog pretty regularly, and you can follow that, or you can go to the um, Healthy Dimensions Weight Loss Facebook page, and all my blogs are posted there as well. Okay, great. So we were talking about your Healthy Dimensions program. So what makes this um, what makes this different than other uh, um, than other approaches? Oh, a couple of things. Um, uh, the most obvious is that it's you know it's mind body. Um, all of this research I was talking about early, I you know I said this is really great stuff, and I applied it, and it worked, and I looked out there for support, and there was just nothing out there like this that includes. Um, you know, a very person-centered uh, way of eating. We start with low carb, but people need to adjust and find their perfect way. What works for me isn't what's going to work for you. But what was really missing was all of the rest of it, the mind and the spirit aspects of it. And so I developed the program to include all of this. It originated as a live workshop, and now I have a self-paced program that anyone anywhere can do. And it it guides you through looking and listening and learning how to listen to your body for the cues about what's working for nutrition, but also how to understand how the brain works and um, how to feed your spirit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it is, we are a whole system. And if we're just, uh, you know, we can get caught up in just the being, working with the physical, if we're not paying attention, for instance, to our emotions, which sometimes drives our eating habits. Absolutely. So how do you teach people to listen to their body? Well, I think, you know, um, we we look at, first of all, you know, the difference between hunger and I want to eat. That's a first step. And then so then you're looking at if it's just I want to eat, then, um, you know, you're looking then at the emotional needs that you're having right now. What is it that's driving you? And we 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 go into a lot about how to manage that and to stop emotional eating. But when it comes to, you know, listening to your body for real hunger, eat when you have real hunger, and then really on a, in a structured way, pay attention to how you feel after you eat. Pay attention to how long it takes you to get hungry again. Because if you're getting hungry and you're having a lot of cravings, uh, then your insulin's probably too high because that's a beautiful thing that happens when you get your insulin levels down. You stop having cravings. Those first week or two is kind of hard because you really, really want that those potato chips. But it's a miracle that once you get that those that insulin down, those cravings really go away. So if the cravings return, that's one of the one of the messages from your body that you're getting too much insulin. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm curious, too, what genetics plays in this. Well, there's lots of evidence that there is a genetic component to being overweight, and um, it, they're looking at the three genes kind of in, in different ways, looking at those things. But I think there's no doubt that there's a group of people who have a more kind of 
uh, archaic, ancient kind of metabolism. The, you know, our original hunter-gatherer, you know, ancestors certainly didn't have that level of carbohydrate that we have now in this, in this, you know, community that we are in. Um, and I think there's, there's definitely a genetic component there. Um, families uh, tend to, you know, look the same. And if you're apple-shaped and you have skinny legs and a big belly, then that is a really good sign that you're overproducing insulin and you kind of have that archaic metabolism that just can't handle it. Mm-hmm. So um, let's, in our, we have a few minutes left. We want to, I want you to share some techniques that you teach people, um, particularly women, that's our audience, um, to listen to their body. Well, one of the one of the techniques that we teach, it's not specifically about listening to your body, but more um, sending, getting your brain in, in, in line with you and on the same side as you. There's been um, some really, really interesting research that was done on simulating events in your mind uh, in the alpha brainwave state. And there's a lot of ways to get to the alpha brainwave state. You can get there with meditation or chanting or doing rosaries, and some people get there by running um, or just staring at, you know, at uh, something and kind of phasing out. That alpha state is very natural. Everyone goes there twice a day when they go to sleep and when they wake up, it's that kind of in-between time. So the alpha state is particularly effective at um, uh, uh, changing your brain programs uh, uh, when you're doing simulation. So what do I mean by simulation? Uh, a, a really great example is there was research done with people who were, they trained them to, to do the simulation for free throws. And uh, they, they simulated doing free throws in their mind every day for 10 or 15 minutes. And then there was another group who actually did free throws every day for 10 or 15 minutes. And they found that both groups got better at the same level. They both got better the same amount. There was even research about um, weightlifting and people actually grew muscle by simulating it. What they know is that it's not so much about simulating being there as it is simulating the things you have to do to get there. So they didn't imagine themselves being great at free throws, they actually imagine themselves doing free throws. Well, how does that apply to weight loss? You imagine yourself at that party that's coming up on Saturday that's going to be so hard to say no to maybe the the cake that's going to be there, and you literally simulate in your mind going to the party and having a great time without eating cake, and it changes to program in your brain. Um, so that it's easier. And doing this kind of simulation on a regular basis, whenever you know you're going to have a challenge, it really works. It really does. It's actually been studied in weight loss, too. But I like those other examples because they're kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of one of the tools that we talk about. Yeah, yeah. So um, what last words of advice would you give to people if they're really struggling with this? They've tried, just like you tried, all sorts of diets. What's the first step they should take? Well, I think learning and getting some education and understanding how metabolism works in the human body and understand once they learn that, then they can reflect and look at how their body is and how their body um, reacts to certain foods and, you know, you know take, take that information and apply it to how they eat. And also, you know, there, again, my book, you know, kind of pulls it all together. There's over 35 books that, you know, have contributed to this, my book. I kind of pulled it all in. And um, it's got, you know, a really nice overview of some of the great research that's been done out there uh, regarding the mind and, and, and feeding your spirit and how that can help reduce the need for emotional eating, which a lot of us really struggle with. Yeah, that's true. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate yeah, you having me. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, and this, a reminder, everybody, um, Elizabeth will be giving a workshop, Listen to Your Body's Wisdom, on Saturday, February 13th at the conference. And check out our website, www.healthy-dimensions.com, and take a look at her, her workbook. I think one of the things that she does is um, has a supportive um, Facebook group for people who are going through this so you know support is very important so i encourage everybody to um take a look at our conference mark your calendars to in two weeks we'll have it up on our website thewowconference.org www.thewowconference.org our our full schedule will be up um could be a week uh, definitely within two weeks for sure and registration will begin and also i want to invite you to our fall festival that's tomorrow at north seattle college um, from 10 30 to 5 lots of artists healings 
and uh, intuitive readings. And we still have our call for the marketplace for our conference. Um, there's still some, um, you can get an application in. There's still time to get an application in by the end of next week. No, sorry, no, by Monday, <laughs> time's going by. Um, if you um, are an artist that ha have homemade things and want to be at our marketplace at the conference, um, just go to our, our website, thewowconference.org, and application forms are there. And if we receive them by, by Monday, we can get you into the selection process. And also, it's open for our temple applications for readers and healers. That deadline is November 15th. So that's all up on our website, www thewowconference.org. I also want to point out, I'm going to be speaking at the Salish Sea Bioneers Conference. It's November 6th through the 8th at the Whidbey Institute on Whidbey Island. It's going to be a powerful weekend exploring how we can work together towards social justice and many other issues we're facing in the world, the environment and climate change and racial issues. Just go to whidbeyinstitute.org for more information and there's scholarships available for that. And check out my book, Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. It's a best award-winning and Amazon bestseller. Um, it's a great inspirational book on the divine feminine. And you can um, read about that at womanofwisdom.org. Okay, well, we're at the end of our time. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll be talking to Brenda Michaels next Friday, who's the author of The Gift of Cancer. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.